Well, God kept technology away from us for as long as possible because he knew what was going to happen. He knew technology wasn't good for us. We were going to get damaged by technology. And this is one of the reasons why God went, no, nah, technology is not the way to go. The tribe of Cain, the line of Cain, the serpent seed line, made a choice, a conscious decision to entrap, trap humanity, both trap and entrap, because that's what he's done. He's, he's gone ahead and uh, found ways to obliterate mankind's freedoms, freedom after freedom. That's been his plan the whole time. What we've seen played out in the world, this has happened many times before. This uh, reset, the enemy's plan is, it's always being played out pretty much the exact same way. He's always doing it in the form of a reset that follows the very same lines. If you go back through history, and as far back as I can look, and I'm, I'm going back as far as 1520, I'm seeing a worldwide pandemic, and that's followed by war. It's always followed by a war. 1520, 1620, 1720, 1820, 1920, 2020. Uh, it's the same. It's the same story. And he's done it so many times and across so many generations that he's gone lazy. He's gotten lazy. All he's done is he's taken an existing working model, prototype idea, and he's gone and done it again and again and again and again. And what's fascinating is that as people are waking up in a generation, he does it. As people are waking up in another generation, he does it. And he keeps doing it. This is a thing he does. So the, the, the idea is what we have seen, especially from the uh, Tartaria, Tartaria, the civilization of Tartaria. And please look it up. There are so many fantastic videos. And by the way, download them. Download the videos because they're not going to be there. When you next look, they'll be gone. As I was going through some of the channels today, uh, and I do this, we've, in the past, we've had staff that have, what I do is I go onto different computers and I open up lots of tabs of things that are really important and need to know. And I leave them open, they come in and they download each one of the files. So they'll download each and every single one of the files. And uh, they'll put them on uh, two or three, four different four terabyte drives, hard drives and then over time I'll get to watch them but some of those videos are no longer available you can't find them anymore they are gone some of those videos no longer you know I was looking for one very specific video which I know we've got on one of our hard drives I just can't locate where it is it's there we've got it but I was looking for a very specific video and I thought you know what I'll just go back on YouTube I'm sure it's on YouTube it wouldn't be because it was such a sensitive subject. Nope, it's not there. It's gone. And not only is it gone, the entire channel associated with that person is gone as well. Like, everything is gone. It's being obliterated. And um, I was very intrigued that a lot of the channels that have got these very, very special videos to watch, especially on things like Tartaria, are all reposts. Reposts. It's somebody else's work that's been reposted on a channel. And it's because those channels have all gone they've all disappeared and um, if you come across a channel that you really really like the best thing you can do is park on that channel for a few days grab yourselves some downloaders and download the files just download those files because they're not gonna be there a lot of people think oh you know I'll come back and watch it later you know how many times I've gone back to watch it later and it's no longer there at all it's no longer there, and uh, and this is you know this is part of the this is part of the orders from higher up. These orders are coming in from the the very top, the higher echelons of these corporations, Google, YouTube, and they're instructed to delete delete channels, take out channels, take out files, get rid of things, censor heavily, censor. The fact that there are some video materials still online that are such good video materials is a testimony to working angels 
that maintain custodianship over some of these channels or these people that are on these uh, these channels. Now, what I've done is I've I've done three things, which I think is going to be very valuable to you. One is I've set up a on our server farm. We have a server farm that is about 100 terabytes and on those 100 terabytes are published video materials that are not you can no longer find them on this platform on YouTube you cannot find them on many of the platforms you might be able to find some of them on as reposts on on BitTorrents um, but I don't think you're gonna find them even on Rumble because as I look I don't find them sometimes you do find snippets of old videos that somebody has just found chopped it up edited it and brought it into a video but for the most part those videos are gone so I've uploaded a huge amount of video materials which I think will be very very valuable to you and these video materials are uh, to do with various subjects there's a whole array a myriad subjects and uh, they include things like uh, the Antichrist um, spiritual warfare tools for spiritual warfare tools for discipleship uh, tools for people in the kingdom like operating businesses companies you know the types of uh, very important um, legal tools uh, there's also information related to past resets and uh, there's a whole folder filled with material on Tartaria there are all kinds of other subjects which you might find very very interesting from a lot of my research over the years a lot of my research over the years has uh, has generated massive amounts of research from video materials to PDFs to documents to books that I've found and downloaded from archives that are no longer available um, you know there was a time it's hard to believe this by some young people uh, you know in their 17s 18s 19s 20s early 20s who who believe who, who can they can't contemplate how the internet at one stage was like the best thing you could get it was it was it was sliced bread you know there were entire libraries of like you'd go on a website and it was filled with information about you know subjects as you know I've studied many many of the world's religions I studied 47 of the world's religions I'm still studying um, other religions so I can debate them I can produce programs about them uh, a lot of the work that I do requires that we produce content um, for broadcasters, distributors worldwide that is unique and different and special and I'm always looking for ideas and um, that's what took me down that road of, you know, I didn't read the Ramayana, the Ramaya because I was interested in the Ramaya or the, you know, the, the uh, that religion. It wasn't really about my interest in that religion it was more about what an amazing film this would make it would make an incredible movie and um, and obviously I wouldn't do that anymore because subsequently I have become completely enamored and in the knowledge that all of those things are all paganism that's all paganism and I don't want to be promoting paganism I don't want to put any form of paganism in the world but I I've realized that biblically the what I'm reading biblically is it this is it this is the absolute truth there are many there are 50 shades of gray but there's only one stark white right there's only one thing that is the truth everything else are bits and pieces of everything else they're just you know bits of esotericism um, uh, Gnosticism they are things that relate to uh, materialism, worldism, avatarism, avatism, uh, they relate to hedonism, they relate to Catholicism, they relate to uh, all the isms, you know, Sumerianism, uh, Sumerian tablets, the, the, uh, the Thoth tablets, the Nagamadi, 
the Nagamadi texts, the Gnostic texts, which, by the way, are very, blah, you know, they're not, um, they, they're so droll, really. And uh, the Popol Vuh, which is not a very thick book. In fact, I got to read the Popol Vuh because of Steve Jobs. I remember reading um, how Steve Jobs had a very interesting uh, fascination for the Popol Vuh, and I thought, well, that's a, that's one I haven't I haven't read. And I, while I was reading the Iverson book, I just jumped across to read the Popol Vuh, which turned out to be a two-hour read. It was so quick, um, and it's it's made of you know text, handwritings, and sketches. And you know, the more I looked into this, I thought this isn't really a, a religion, but it is. You know, it turned out to be a religion. Uh, Baha'ism, which is another form of Islam, uh, and Zoroastrianism, Zor Zoroastrianism, which is also Islam, falls under the same category, the same principality. Um, and there's so many of these others that, uh, you know, I, I looked into. There were so many things that I found fascinating. I mean, I went into Kabbalah, Spiritism, the spiritual uh, books of the, of the Jews, and... Um, and what I've done is I've tried to tackle each one in a different in a different video. So if you've been following our channel for a while, you've come across sometimes where I've gone a little bit deeply into some of these texts. And I don't go deeply into them because there's really no point in sort of communicating something that is paganism. But you know, whether you're reading the Bhagavad Gita, uh, you know, or the Ramaya. And you're following the, the precepts and concepts of Brahman and how people are destined for their their destiny irrespective of what happens you know you see on the uh, on the battlefield Sri Krishna um, you know the, the 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 armies are visited and the two brothers you probably know the story where the one brother is visited by the other and they're on the opposite sides of the of different of the armies and the one uh, one one of the brothers says uh, you know, we have opposing views, but we're brothers. We've just found that we're brothers on the battlefield. Uh, you know, we're not going to kill each other, right? And the brother kills him because they had to fulfill their destiny. They had to fulfill their destiny. You know, this is, um, it's really hard to understand this, but I'm finding this with our families right now. People that we're supposed to, you know, give concessions to, that we love, you know, and I'm talking it from the other perspective, from their side. They should be good to us. They should love us. They should be kind to us. They're hard on us. They're, you know, just because we're not, we're divided against them, you know, they feel that we're divided. And I always say, but, you know, what's the similarity between an abominated person and an unabominated person? And that is that they will never be completely abominated, e either of them, because we're not, we're not abominated. They're abominated, but in three months' time, they're not going to be abominated again. They're not going to be abominated anymore. They're going to have to re-abominate. And this is, one of the, this is one of the challenges. What the is going on? What is going on? Absolutely crazy. We live in a very crazy world and people continue to, to drive with their masks on. You know, the carbon monoxide, the carbon dioxide that is forming in, in this little area here. Hypoxy. Hypoxia. You know, um, they don't realize how dangerous it is to be operating a weapon of mass destruction this thing uh, with a with a uh, face nappy Whew. human beings those who believe the lie are sent a strong delusion by God and because they believed a lie God sent them a strong delusion so biblically the Tartarian Empire was was the the former world the world before us 
and uh, and I know, yes, I'm very well aware of all of the the different persons that I've spoken about when exactly Tartaria could be placed on the maps, and um, you know we've we've got. A, a belief that Tartaria is actually two, three, four, maybe even 500 years ago, but in actual fact, it's actually not. It's actually right up until the late 1800s, 1876, and we're still seeing vestiges of that leading right up until about the 1930s. You can still see, even in a, there's a, a movie that was being produced by Howard Hughes that contained many uh, it was all set built for sure but it had numerous references visual sig signatures to the Tartarian world if you follow the Tartarian world like I have since about 2010 20, 2009 actually even before that but I think 2009 you know I I'd, I'd actually had books before that that were fascinating amazing large books but I sadly you know you move and things happen and I sold those and those those moved they went elsewhere they went to other owners but you know I could already see a huge amount of presence of the Tartarian Empire in those books and when I started to see that this was beginning beginning to be a thing online on YouTube you know you started to see videos in 2009 uh, that were absolutely amazing on the Tartarian Empire the Tartarian world a lot of these books covered a lot of these videos covered scans or pictures of books that had so many photographs of the Tartarian Empire which of course is a big question you know because most people start to think but how come we're told about cameras, you know, being a, a sort of a late 1800s thing, but, you know, some of these photos are coming out of the 1820s, 1830s, 1840s. You know, when exactly was that first camera developed? Um, there's also some very intriguing things in that we're seeing these cities, these massive cities, massive, massive cities that are empty they're completely empty you know the streets are empty the it's almost like they're in lockdown right but I think it's more serious than that I think what's happened is that they've gone in and uh, and pulled people out children children were taken away separated from their parents and uh, mums and dads were cleared out of the cities they were cleared out and killed um, really 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 sad you know a um, moments in time that they squashed they quietened they they made sure that no one would get to know I was on a holiday about two years ago with that same family that accompanied us on this trip to Asia and um, I remember showing him on a mobile phone one of these um, one of these one of these friends friends of ours of mine friends um, and I say that because they've all been abominated you know not a single person called uh, not a, it's just so fascinating you know I was the one trying to warn them and warn them and warn them and warn them and they took it they took it they took umbrage you know they um, they, they weren't impressed by me trying to save their lives, which is really intri intriguing to me. Um, yeah, it's a very intriguing thing because I had to recall exactly where we were because um, I'm not always in these cities. I, I do travel a bit. So I go from place to place, and I, I sort of hope where the uh, where these missions are located. But I realize now where that mission is located in this city. Sometimes different cities tend to blur between each other because they're so similar in design. 
And that's another very interesting clue why the world is so, um, you know, suspiciously, why the world is so suspiciously designed, developed, put into place, is I think what I'm trying to say. Uh, because what we are seeing is, and we know this from our study of Tartaria, that it doesn't matter where in the world you are, you know, they all have very similar architecture, especially the colonial style, Tartarian style government housing. A lot of these government style buildings all had a very specific look. And yes, they've been modernized and they've been repainted and they've been changed and they've been whatever, but ultimately they're all, I mean, I would, from being in Asia, I was looking at every single one of the, every single one of the buildings that we arrived at, no matter which harbor we arrived at, it didn't matter which harbor, they all looked the same. It didn't really matter, you know, India, uh, Thailand, Singapore, um, Malaysia, um, you know, any of the, the islands, the Balinese, uh, Bali through to Indonesia, like everything looked the same. In other words, the same designers, the same architects, the same belief system people had put together these cities. So the world, the world of Tartaria followed followed to the whole world. The Tartarians were international. They were everywhere. You know, a lot of times people think it's the Mongolians. Oh, the Mong they weren't the Mongolians. You know, the world of Tartaria reached Mongolia, but it wasn't like Mongolia reached the world. No, that's not what happened. The Tartarian world, the Tartarian empire reached everywhere, but where we're told that it originally comes from is where we're told that it all comes from is Mongolia, but that is not the truth. <laughs>